Anya Hart here. Thank you for joining us on Hollywood Live. Well, today we have somebody very special with us. She is a great documentarian, and she has a new documentary out. Haley, welcome to you, Jamila. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you. It's great to be here. Oh, I'm great to see you in person and to meet you. I got to tell you, this piece was wonderful. I had the pleasure very early in my career to meet Alvin Ailey and to actually hang out with Judas. So you know what that was like. Wow. Nice. I, I got stories. So uh, <laughs> other than that, though, you know, here we are 60 some years after the founding of this company. And tickets for Revelations are selling like hotcakes for 2022. Why is that? I just think there's, you know, something in that work that is eternal. I mean, it is an evergreen work that I think just speaks to, it's the saga of, of a people. It is about the things that I keep saying define um, parts of the Black tradition. Um, and I think it's just that people feel a real joy in being able to see, you know, parts of what, what truly defined Black life, you know, put on the stage, dramatized, theatricalized, you know, it's their aunties and their grandmas and their, um, you know, their sorrow, but also their capacity to get through. Yeah, it's just because watching your documentary um, there's a certain feeling and things that you learn about the Black experience, in case you didn't know. What would you say that you learned about the Black experience that perhaps you didn't know? I think that it's just the, it's about more the kind of lens that Mr. Ailey chose to cast on it. You know, I think there is a way that too often, you know, the depictions are about the struggle and there is life, you know, the community is whole, is intact, is for me, in his works and in thinking about his life, it's it's a kind of reevaluation of what we mean when we talk about wealth and what defines wealth. And sometimes wealth is not money. It's about family and community and beauty. Um, and those are the things that allow you, as I say, to get through. Um, and so I think that he is a real, um, if you want to know why Black life matters, you know, here is why. Uh, and I think his work is a testament to that. Oh, it absolutely is. And the fact that it is still going so strong, uh, as we just mentioned. You know what I loved about your documentary? You had some of his original people in there that are fortunately still with us. And there's, how did you find these folks? Yeah, I mean, well, Mr. Lavalade, you know, fortunately is still here in New York City. And so as one of the you know, she's the person who introduces him to Lester Horton, his great mentor, and is, you could say, responsible for his, his finally accepting dance as his calling. Um, so that was just terrific to be able to get to her. And then, you know, Don Martin, his friend from um, LA, who also danced with him, you know, reaching out, it turns out Don Martin was friends with Maya Angelou. So I'd seen him in that documentary <laughs> and I did the kind of cross-referencing of, is this the same person? And it was, so we got to him. Um, you know, and I think he just was a person who cultivated, you know, he gave, he gave so much uh, and there was so much love that I think people really wanted to come out and, and speak and test to give testimony to their experiences of him. So, oh, they did. And they did it so graciously and, and tearfully uh, in, in many instances. I, the thing that I really learned about, well, I kind of knew this, but he was still so lonely. And as many artists that are that great often are, they are so lonely because they feel, you know, they have so much riding on their backs and so many people that they have to take care of. And what kind of toll do you think that took on Alvin Ailey? Yeah, I think it took an extraordinary toll. I mean, we kept think we, you know, in those audio recordings that we're able to use from the last year of his life and hearing him say, you know, did you sacrifice, you know, he's asked, did you sacrifice anything for dance? Oh, everything. Like that's, you know, everything. And, um, you know, he was driven to do that, driven maybe to do it, or as George Faison suggests, he's just possessed to do it. There was no other way. Um, I think there was a lot that he 
had to sacrifice in terms of building his institution. I think he was aware of the incredible opportunity and responsibility, and he took that on to his shoulders as so many of, you know, the James Baldwin's, Lorian Hansberry's, you know, the, these individuals who are leaders do. Um, but I think there is a message in there for us to reconsider, you know, is that necessary? Is that the only way? Is there not space for self-care? Should you open yourself up more? Um, you know, why was he unwilling to kind of allow light to be shined on him in the ways that he was so capable of shining light on others? Do you think that that has changed with the younger generations today? I mean, you're kind of in that crossroads, you know, right there between the, you know, the, the, the boomers and the millennials and the whatever is after that. Uh, and you, you've got a really good career going, girl. I want to tell you that. I love your stuff. <laughs> Uh, I've been watching you. So, but thinking about kids today, uh, when they see this, what do you expect for them to get out of it and learn from this? Yeah, I think there's a way that you can understand Mr. Ailey as kind of a man of his times. And he had to kind of forge a path that, um, that had to be forged. And what I love and I'm so impressed by and astonished by the younger generation, I'm talking like the 20, 20 year olds and younger, is that they do not owe anybody anything anymore. And they don't feel that. And I think they are having active conversations about ways that they just refuse to, to sacrifice themselves for some kind of sense of depth of exceptionality. Or, you know, there's a way that they are interested in creating community. There's a whole, in, extraordinary conversation right now about mental health and self-care and um I mean I'm like I wish I had I wish <laughs> I had some of what that generation has I think I straddle both in that way um but yeah I think there is a real sense that the price that was paid you know didn't didn't have to be um and that future generations aren't interested in that well you know the thing there I'll tell you what's tricky about this because it's about black excellence and the price that we've all had to pay for black excellence because Quite frankly, I wouldn't be sitting here and you wouldn't be sitting there if, you know, I was raised with, okay, well, you have to be three times better than everybody because just to get yourself seen and heard. Mm -hmm. And that was real. That was very, and still, still is in many ways. So there is that, the price that we've all paid for Black excellence. And where does that line cross with, okay, but you still have to be really good at what you do because it's important. Yeah. I don't know. I think that's a complicated, you have to be really good at what you do for whom and where, you know, and I think there's a conversation right now about like, well, what are the institutions you're trying to have access to and break into and who are you trying to impress? Um, I, I very much feel that, um, that pressure because I think, you know, I'm a kid of the nineties and that was very much still there. I, I don't think that the younger generations feel that. And, you know, I think about that great ta Coates, line about the sort of promise of America was the the freedom to be mediocre <laughs> and so, yeah. you know I'm not I'm not saying like let's all be mediocre but that twice as good uh work twice as uh you know hard to be and twice as good only to get half as far right that old adage I just think there is a way that we can reevaluate that and some of the resistance is challenging that Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, again, this will, this uh, comes up, uh, you air this on when the 6th, I think of August, this is coming up. Yes. Nationwide yes. on August 6th. I know. Well, it is so good. Congratulations to you. What's up next for you? Cause you've got, like I said, a good career going here. Uh, thank you. I am actually currently directing a six part uh, music documentary series that I can't disclose any more details of because it hasn't been announced, but um, that is the next mountain to be climbed as I keep saying. So um Good for you. And what do you want to leave your parting words about Ailey? You know, for the audiences who don't know him, please come meet him. He's an extraordinary American that everybody should know. And the work that he did is, you know, so foundational. Um, and for those that love him, I hope that you will, you know, be able to kind of revel in his beauty and, and get to sort of be closer to him and love him as much as I do. And quite frankly, I'm going to try, and I already did some of those dance moves. I saw those kids do <laughs> <laughs> can I still do that? Just so you know, you can get a little exercise in here too. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> thank you so much. Come and see us anytime. All right. Thank you. Okay, everybody. And thanks for joining us today. It's always a good day here on Hollywood Live.